Okay, so in the last lecture, I told you that you could beat the Shannon Nyquist sampling rate if you randomly uh, sampled 128 time points out of this very, very high resolution time series of this audio signal. And I wanna show you now that if you kind of naively downsampled this uniformly, so if we just uh, did a uniform downsampling and didn't space these randomly in time, but spaced them evenly in time, but at a much coarser rate, you would not at all recover the right solution. So I'm gonna code that up, because uh, I think that will be kind of fun. So nothing really changes, um, except here, when I am downsampling in Y, I'm, what I did before was I randomly chose these, I, so this perm is a random vector, and I'm randomly pulling those indices uh, from, from X. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, uh, actually, I'm gonna do what's 4096 divided by 128, it's 32. I'm only going to sample every 32, every 32nd entry of x. So y equals x of 32 colon 32 colon end. So this is going to massively, massively downsample x into 128 uh, measurements in y, but they're not going to be random. They're going to be uniformly spaced. So th these are kind of the two alternative paths. Okay, what I did in uh, before is I randomly sampled in time at a very low rate on average. Here, I'm sampling uniformly at a very slow rate, okay? And I'm gonna show you that this uniform, uniform down sampling is bad, okay? We're not gonna be able to solve for the true solution if we uniformly down sample because we will actually throw away information. We will alias our signal and we'll lose all that rich information that we get from randomly sampling. Okay, so I'm literally just uh, just going to show the difference between uh, kind of what we did before. Uh, this doesn't look right. I think my positions are a little. Oh, I'm still plotting versus my rand perm. So what I want to do is uh, I want to create a vector of 32 by 32 by uh, length of x, hopefully that works. Okay, this did not work. Live coding is dangerous. Let's see if I can actually get this, uh, oh, times delta t, yep. Okay, I need that, uh, that's a massive vector and I need to multiply this by my delta t or divide by 4096. Come on, this is gonna work eventually. Yes, all right. Okay, except these points are not all perfectly on my data. Actually, I think this is. I think that this point does actually go up, does it? Yeah, this is dangerous to live code. Yep, that point actually went up, you can see. Okay, good, so now all of my red points are actually overlapping, you know, they're on this, this white high resolution data set. But now instead of sampling randomly, which is what you need to do in compressed sensing, I'm sampling uniformly. So I'm just every, you know, I have this big fixed delta T and I'm just sampling every delta T in red. And you can see obviously that if I just try to fit a Fourier solution to this, I'm gonna get some like really weird low frequency stuff. And there's no way that this is gonna find this ultra high frequency 777 hertz part of the signal. Okay, at least that's my uh, gut feeling. So now we're gonna run our COSAMP algorithm uh, down here. Now remember, <coughs> our psi here is this discrete cosine transform matrix, um, and this C matrix tells me when I sampled. Now that can't be perm, it has to be um, Again, 32 by 32 by length of x. I need to be very careful or else everything's gonna break. <coughs> okay. There's a chance something will still break. What did I do? Okay, just that. And it's running the cosamp. It thinks it has a solution. It's gonna try to find the sparsest solution that's consistent with these uniformly sampled in time measurements. But okay, this is where, again, classic <coughs> Nyquist sampling theory would say that if I uniformly sample at 128 hertz, there's no way I'm gonna be measuring or picking up on a 777 hertz part of the signal, right? I can't possibly pick up on that. 
And now when I plot the rest of the signal, we see that we just get garbage, basically. Okay, so we get all of this weird stuff here that has nothing to do with our original signal, and this is what uh, the reconstructed inverse Fourier transform. It's just complete garbage. It doesn't match at all. Whereas that was what happens when you uniformly sample. Okay. Now if I go back and I, uh, I just go back and, um, and randomly sample, I just want to remind you what this looks like. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to comment that out and go back and kind of make everything the way it was. Now we are not... Um, uniformly <coughs> downsampling, but we are randomly sampling uh, points in time. So now again, we have these kind of random points in time, and so some of them can actually be quite close to each other, and we know exactly what timing these were all taken at. Then we can get away with solving for this sparse vector with many, many, uh, a much lower on average sampling rate. I think this is hopefully run and we faithfully reconstruct our signal. We find that the sparse vector S that has kind of this power spectrum is the, the vector S that's most consistent with those random in time measurements, even though uh, if I did uniform in time, it wouldn't have worked, okay? Now you'll notice, I didn't point this out before, but you'll notice that these amplitudes are quite a bit off. They're not really the right amplitudes here. Um, that happens sometimes when you find these one norm solutions, often the amplitudes are a little wrong. What I usually recommend doing is once you find what values should be non-zero, so you find kind of the sparsity pattern, then what I would do is I'd do at least squares onto those two frequencies. Once we know that those are the only non-zero entries, I would then do a least square solution to find what are the best values of those that fits this in a least square sense, okay? And then you, you get this very nice, faithful recovery. Okay, excellent. So we have uh, shown how you can solve this compressed sensing problem for a toy version of an audio signal or kind of a one-dimensional signal in time with random measurements, and we've looked at how important it is that those measurements are actually random. All right, thank you.